Now, whoever listens the best, all right, Micaiah's got a $20 bill for him, okay? <laughs> he said, all right, man. He said, no. All right. <laughs> Genesis, Genesis 19. I apologize for being late. As soon I got through Atlanta, and as soon as I got through Atlanta, there was on my GPS there on my phone, there was all blue. I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. It was all blue. And then they decided to close down two lanes of the highway right up here at 7 o'clock. Yeah. So anyway, all right, Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. I want you to know, how many know who Lot is in the Bible? Lot was Abraham's nephew. Lot goes down to, uh, uh, to the, the plains there. Abraham says you can have anything on this side or anything on this side. The Bible says Lot lifted up his eyes and looked at the well-watered plains of Jordan over Abraham and goes and dwells in a country that he's not supposed to. He goes and dwells in that country that he's not supposed to be in. And next thing you know, look at Genesis chapter 13 and verse 14. And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated, I'm sorry, verse 12, verse 12, verse 11. Here we go. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan. And Lot journeyed east, and they separated themselves, the one from the other. Now notice Genesis 12, uh, 13, 12. Abram dwelled in the land of Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his what? Tent. Tent towards Sodom. Now, I don't like camping. In fact, I hate camping, okay? I don't know why anybody wants to pay a bunch of money to pretend like they're homeless, but whatever, if you do that, that's your business, okay? Amen. My wife says, but it's fun, you know, we, you know, anyway, yeah, my wife loves to go camping, and uh, she, my wife, it's a family tradition, they go camping for two weeks every summer. No, 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 I, we don't do that. Camping maybe one night is enough, maybe, maybe one night. She said, but it's a tradition in my family. I said, baby, it was a tradition in everybody's family before they invented houses. So anyway, <laughs> now notice, when you go camping, when you go, when you go camping, you pitch a tent. When you go out of that tent door, the first thing you see, right in front of the Bible says he pitched his tents toward Sodom. Mm -hmm. So the very first thing that Ab uh, excuse me, Lot and his family saw every time they came out of their tent door was Sodom. Let me say something, young person. You may not be in Sodom yet, but some of you may already have your tents pitched that way. Wow. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. And every time you come out of your tent door, the first thing you see is Sodom. Mm -hmm. Now notice what happens with <laughs> Lot. He, by, we, we leave Lot here in chapter 13, pitching his tents towards Sodom, and then we go on to find in Genesis 19. Go to Genesis 19. Look at Genesis 19. All right, it, for real, what time do I need to be done? You got 30 minutes. I got 30 minutes from now. Okay. So 8.15 will be done. 8.15 standard time or eastern time? I'm kidding. All right. Anyway, <laughs> central time. All right, now notice this. Genesis 19. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat where? In the gate of Sodom. So we, we leave Lot in the plains of Jordan with his tent pitched towards Sodom, we find in Genesis 19, Lot's now sitting in the gate. Now notice what it said. Now we're all going somewhere with this. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground, and he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet, and ye shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they <coughs> turned in unto him and entered into his house, and he made them a feast and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. Lot said, You don't want to stay in these streets tonight. I preach a lot up in Michigan, and I like Detroit. All right, Anybody know anything about Detroit? One of the highest crime rates in all the country. I like it, though, not the crime, but I like going to Detroit. You know, the, the rule about being in Detroit, though, is never be out past sundown. Mm -hmm. Don't ever go about past dark. <coughs> How many of y'all know who Jack Patterson is? Yep. All right? <laughs> Me, Jack Patterson, and Bill Grady were up a couple of weeks ago in Michigan preaching the King James Bible Conference, and Brother Jack, I had my family with me. I've got four boys all 
under the age of eight. And Brother Jack, Brother Suter, let's go down there to Dooley's, right down there in downtown, downtown Detroit. Let's go down there and get us some hot dogs. Let's get, get a good hot dog down there, man. And Brother Gray looks over and says, that's a good idea, Jack. Let's take these four boys in downtown Detroit at 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it's not a place you want to be out in the night. And Sodom wasn't a place you wanted to be out at night. I know it's first number four. But before they laid down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, we all know the story, can pass the house round about, both old and young and all the people from every corner. And they called it a lot and said, Where are the men which came into, uh, into thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. This wasn't the welcoming committee. They weren't going to throw them a party, okay? Now notice verse number six. And Lot went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him and said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known man. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you, and do ye to them as it's good in your eyes. Notice here, Lot, the nephew of Abraham, who journeyed with Abraham, who was there with the quote-unquote man of God for the time, he's now in Sodom, and these men come. They said, bring out those two men so that we can do unimaginable things to them. He says, don't do this wicked thing. Let me, here, I've got two daughters that are virgins. I'll bring them out to you and you do whatever you want with them. How wicked is that? Yeah. Wicked. I, I could never imagine doing that, preacher. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I'm sure Lot, I'm sure Lot, when he was journeying with Uncle Abraham, said, well, I could never be like those people down in Sodom. Yeah. And now he's offering his two daughters. Look at verse number 9. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came into sojourn and he will needs be a judge. Now will we deal worse with thee than with them. And they pressed sore upon the man, even Lot, and came near to break the door. Let me tell you something. Let me just throw a little nugget in right here. The world, if you try to be a Christian in the world, and you try to saddle both sides of the fence. But listen, the world hates you anyway. Yes, sir. Yeah. And you're trying, you're trying to make yourselves palatable to the world. You're trying to make friends with the world. Listen, the Bible says in James chapter four, verse number four, that the yes, friendship sir. of the world is enmity against Amen. God. Whosoever therefore is the friend of the world is the Amen. enemy of God. Amen. Amen. The world doesn't like you anyway. You're trying to suck up and buddy up with people who don't even like you. They hate your God. They hate your Bible. They hate hey. your church. They hate your life. They hate your religion. They hate everything about you, and yet you try to change yourself, and you try to make Christianity palatable. Well, I'm going to let them see what a, uh, you know, that Christians can be kind and understanding, and, and I understand all that, but you've got to understand at the same time. The Bible says that we're salt, not sugar. Yeah. Hmm. You know what salt does to a wound? It burns it. When you get the saltiness of the Christian life down into the wounds of the world, it hurts. They don't like it. And Lot was trying to make himself pout. Lot was sitting in the gate of the city. That's biblical talk or biblical terminology for he had gotten a high place. He had gotten high up. He was well respected. He sat in the gate of the city. They said, you come and sojourn among us. You're not even one of us. You're not even one of us. You're going to come down. You're going to try to be a judge. You're going to try to tell me what's right and wrong. You're going to try to tell us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. We're going to deal worse with you now. That's how the world operates, young people. Yes, sir. You try to get in good with them and try to be popular and try to get in with the crowd. And the first sign, the first sign of you trying to be spiritual, are you trying to be moral? Well, guys, I don't know if we ought to go down there. I shut up. What are you doing here anyway? That's how they are, man. The world will leave you for dead. Yes. Yep. Yes, sir. Wow. Now, hang on. This is all my introduction. Just stay with me, okay? So forth and so on. We know the story. The angels smote the men with blindness. They groped about looking for the door. Now, I want you to notice in verse 12. We're going to get down to the bulk of the message. You ready? And the men said unto Lot, Hast thou here any besides Son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters and whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord. And the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, sons which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place. 
for the Lord will destroy this city. Now, Lot believed the word of the Lord, didn't he? Yep. My goodness. He said, listen, Lot knew the judgment of God. Don't you, listen, the flood, Genesis flood, that got passed down from generation and generation and generation. <laughs> Lot had heard the story of the Genesis flood. Lot had heard the stories of the Lord. Listen, the Lord had revealed himself to Abraham and Lot had been following Abraham. So these two angels show up and he says, my goodness, God's going to destroy this city. I mean, listen, where are we at? Bill, am I in Villa Rica right now? This is Villa Rica. All right, wonderful. Notice, if God all of a sudden said, hey, Happy Valley Baptist Youth Group, God is going to burn Villa Rica to a crypt. Everybody in here is going to be part of a great barbecue and you ain't getting out alive. I'd freak out a little bit, okay? Yes, sir. I'd get in my car and get out. Yeah. I'd leave in a heartbeat. Yes, sir. If I was to look at you, Jeremiah, right? Okay, what's your name? Timothy. Timothy. All right, there we go. These three came up to my church a couple weeks ago. If I was looking at you and say, Jeremiah, I, the seat you're sitting in right now is going to explode like in three seconds. You mean I've got two seconds to think about it? No, he'd get out of the seat, right? Yeah. Lot freaks out. Lot goes and gets, yeah, son-in-law's, my daughter's, get, get everybody we can. we got to get out of the city. But wait a second. Lot was the one that pitched his tents towards the city. Yes, sir. Wait a second. Lot was the one that eventually moved his family into the city. Wait a second. Lot was the one that eventually was sitting in the gate of the city, a place of prestige and honor. Lot was the one that had tried to make... Fourteen. But he seemed... As one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, sure lot, sure lot. Oh, the, the angels are going to destroy this. This place is so bad. You're the one that brought us here. You're the one that brought us to this city. Your daughters came down to this city. We, we met your daughters because you moved here. And now you're going to tell us to get up and get out of here? Oh, yesterday this place was so great, but now today it's so bad. Get out of here, Lot. We're not going with you. We're staying in the city. He tried to tell his family and he tried to tell his son-in-laws to get out of the city. Fire was coming. Judgment was coming. But he had spent his whole life, his whole adult life, raising those children in Sodom, teaching them the ways of Sodom, allowing his daughters to marry the men of Sodom. He'd spent the past... 20-something years, however long it was, engaging himself and living in Sodom. 24 hours ago, everything was fine, but all of a sudden, now it's not okay to be here. He seemed like one that mocked. Psh, yeah, right, Lot. You evidently hadn't been too concerned about the wickedness of this city. In fact, let's go, let's go to... Second Peter, very quick, the second Peter. Look at Second Peter chapter number two. We find we find a New Testament witness of what happened a lot. Look at Second Peter. Second Peter chapter number two. And Second Peter chapter number two and verse number six, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you're not, just look intelligently on the page you're at. Nobody will know the difference. All right. Second Peter chapter two and verse number six. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example, and excuse me, an example unto those that should live, excuse me, that after should live ungodly. And I've got a sneeze, but it's not coming, amen. Look at verse number seven. And delivered. What's that word? Lot. Just Lot. Now, listen. Notice what it says. Just Lot vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man. Now, let me say something. If Lot, or excuse me, if the Bible would have never said that Lot was righteous, I'd have never believed it. Yes, amen. That's true. You know why? Because sometimes saved people can act like lost people. Yes. Amen. Yep. Amen. 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 Sometimes saved people can act like lost people. <laughs> and if the New Testament would have never said that Lot was a righteous man, I never believed it. Yes. Mm. Mm. Now the problem is, 
Notice what it said. He was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked for that righteous man dwelling where? Among, Among them. them. Vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. Now notice this. Lot's righteous soul was vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked dwelling among them from day to day. Now back in Genesis 19 where it says that he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons. I want to finish up here. Last part of the message. That was all my introduction. Here's my message. You ready? I want to talk to you tonight about the waste of a worldly witness. The waste of a worldly witness. Amen. Let's pray very quickly. Father, help us now as we dig into some truths from your word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. amen. Now watch this young person. Lot took the downward spiral down all the way to Sodom. He started out with Abraham and he wound up in Sodom. The Bible says that the angels came. We just read all the story. It said, this place is going to burn up. Get out of here. He said, the angel said, do you have any more family members? He goes to the family members that he has left. And he says, well, we got to get out of here. Destruction's coming. Judgment's coming. He was like one that mocked. And Lot wasted his witness because he was worldly. Let me say something to you, young person. You've got family members and you've got friends and you've got loved ones and you've maybe got co-workers and you get around them and they know you go down to this church. They know you're a Christian. They know you, they, that you believe the Bible. They know that you seem to be spiritual and religious from time to time and they know you go to church every Sunday and youth group on Wednesday nights. But you get around them and you talk just like they do. And you listen and sing the same kind of music they listen well, to. Hey. And you dress just like they yeah, do. And on. you talk to them and you listen. You live just like they do. You hey, watch the yeah. same things on TV that they watch. You yes, go sir. down to the movie theaters and see the same things they see. You love hey. all over your boyfriend your girlfriend just like they do. Amen. I'm still hey, against that. Yeah. Amen. Yes, amen. Sir. Amen. Amen. It's good for a man not to touch a woman. That's yeah. what hey. 1 Corinthians 7 1 says. Yes, hey, you live and act and talk and look just like like they do, and all of a sudden you get a little bit of concern for their soul, and you try to talk to them about Jesus, and you try to tell Amen. them they'll die and go to hell and burn forever, and they look at you and say, why in the world would I listen to what you're saying? Amen. You good. are just like I am. Wow. That's good. Mm. Now let me say something very quickly. I do not believe in lifestyle evangelism. You say, preacher, what's lifestyle evangelism? Let me explain very quickly. I don't live right and live clean in front of lost people so that they come up and say, there's something different about you. Would you please tell me what it is? I have never had that happen to me, okay? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. People say, well, if you, you don't really have to tell anybody about Jesus. If you just live like Jesus, that's enough. Hogwash, okay? Yes, sir. Hogwash. Amen. The Bible says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel, not live the gospel, yes, okay? Amen. I believe in confrontational soul winning. You ought to tell people how to be saved. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Well, let me say this. I believe in verbal, uh, verbal soul winning. But you better have a life that backs up the Amen. truth that you're preaching. Yes, Amen. Amen. If I go out in downtown Asheville every Friday night and get slapped drunk and smoke dope and run around with women, and then I try to tell somebody that they need to trust Jesus Christ as Savior, ain't nobody going to listen to me because I've wasted my witness being worldly. And young person, some of you, you're going down the wrong track, you're going down the wrong path, you're acting just like the world, and on the day of judgment, when those lost sinners are standing at the great white throne, and you're in the grand stands of heaven looking down, they're going to point their finger up at you and say, why didn't you ever tell me? Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Maybe some of them are going to look at you and say, why didn't you live like a Christian? I would have thought there was something to Christianity if you'd have just lived like one. But see, they don't think there's anything to you. You're as fake as a $3 bill, man. Ain't nothing to you. Wow. Amen. The words you say, listen, the words you say have no meaning. They have no power. They have no bearing. Because you're wasting your witness being worldly. <laughs> 
problem with Lot was he had the truth. Boy, how frustrating is it to tell somebody the truth and they don't believe you? Amen. Isn't that frustrating? Yes, sir. I mean, I'm, that just gets up. I'm trying to tell somebody the truth and they won't listen to me. Yes, sir. I Listen, I want the reason they don't listen to me to be that they don't want to get saved. Amen. Not that they looked at me and said, why would I want anything you've got? Well, Amen. Yeah. Yes, that sir. makes sense? Let me yes, say that all. Let me say that again in case some of you missed it. I don't want the reason that somebody... Get, I, I, want, I want them to reject Jesus Christ because they don't want Jesus Christ. I don't want them to reject Jesus Christ because I lived a life in front of them to where they didn't want Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. You're right. Yep. The waste of worldly witness. Yes, sir. Mm. I'm going to say this tonight. Every lost person, this is so, isn't this so elementary? Isn't this so, isn't this so elementary? Let me, let me say it tonight. Every lost person that dies, dies and goes to hell <clears throat> and burns forever. Now, let me say this. I've got a situation right now, a family a family uh, in, in my church. They're, one of their loved ones are dealing with cancer. And my grandmother had cancer. She survived it, luckily. My grandfather on my dad's side, he got cancer three times. He had it four times, and the fourth one got him. He told me before he died, he said a three out of four batting average isn't bad. So he passed away the fourth time with cancer. A saved man. I wish I had the cure for cancer. I really do. Amen. I wish I had it. Yes, sir. Me too. Now, if I had the cure for cancer and I never gave it out to anybody, how cruel would you think I was? Yes. Or if you were at the doctor's office and you said, "I've been, I've been having a, a weird pain in my in my neck and I, I just I can't swallow hardly and." And there's a lump there, and I can feel it, and I've been losing weight. And you go in, and the doctor staggers out, and he's drunk. You can smell weed on him. He said, I think you got cancer. How happy are you going to believe him? I think I'll just go to another place. Yes, sir. I'm going to get a second opinion. Hmm. Why? Because the way the, doc the doctor's telling you the truth, man, you probably you got cancer. Hmm. But the way he's acting, hmm. you don't believe a word he's saying. He's not credible. So number one, if you've got a cure, you ought to give it to people. And number two, if you if you're if you have the cure, you ought to give it, and you ought to make yourself credible. You ought to make yourself seem like what you're saying is true. Am I making sense? Yes. Amen. All right, I need a volunteer. Are you, are you running that? Okay, you come here then, Jeremiah. Come here. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna run you down through here. Now there's there's two things you need to do tonight. There's probably two things some of you need to do. Number one, some of you just need to get right with the Lord because you're living like a world man, all right? Yes, sir. You just need to get right with Jesus. Amen. Number two, maybe you say, Preacher, I'm right with Jesus. I'm not out doing anything that bad. I mean, I, they're all, we can always improve on something, right? But I'm, yeah, I'm pretty well right with the Lord. But you ain't telling nobody about Jesus. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to teach you really quick. The last, let's see, we got here. We've got ten minutes, all right? A ten minute crash course in soul winning. You ready? I'm going to be the saved person. Jeremiah's going to be the lost person. Probably not much of a stretch, all right? Here we go. All right. Let's say you're at the door. You knock on the door. Or maybe Jeremiah's your best friend. Knock on the door. You're sitting at a house. Say, come to the door. Jeremiah, my name's Andrew Sluder. I'm from Happy Valley Baptist Church. We'd just like to invite you to church on Sunday. Y'all do organized soul winning? Yes, yes. Yes, okay, wonderful. So Y'all got tracks, do the whole tracks and all that. Yes. Wonderful. Yes, all right. Notice here. Oh, here's, here's something right here. That's the Ten Commandments. All right, here we go. I knock on the door. When they come to the door, smile. Smile real big. All right? Cheesy smile. All right, nobody? We're from Happy Valley Baptist Church. No pun intended, okay? All right? I think I'll get that later. Smile at them. They come to the door. Hi, my name's Andrew Suter. I'm from Happy Valley Baptist Church. We're just out. I put it right. I put it right up. We're just out and back people to church on Sunday. Wanted to give you an invitation. Boom. If you do this, watch this. You ready for this? We're going to do a social experiment. We're going to do a social experiment. Okay. Social experiment. Y'all ready for a social experiment? Are you ready? Are you ready for a social experiment? Are you ready for one? Well, I noticed I just did it. Did anybody refuse my handshake? No. Sir. No. You know why? Because when you do this, the natural action is just to do that. It right. teaches that in sales. Yes, All right. Sir. Amen. When I was doing insurance, you just you do this right there. Just, it's natural. It's natural. 
So guess what? Hi, I'm Andrew Suter. I'm from Bible Baptist Church. Well, I'm Happy Valley. Happy Valley Baptist Church. Is from, I'm the pastor there. Happy Valley Baptist Church. We're just out in the community inviting people to church. We'd love to have you sometime. There's an invitation. It's natural. Don't ask him if you can give him something. No. No, you ain't asking nothing. Just hand it to him. And then I get him up. Okay, switch places with him. All right, then I'll get him up and... And I'll say, by our numbers on there, if we, if our church can ever do anything for you, you give us a call anytime. Because you want that. Listen, don't act like you love sinners if you're not willing to be there for them when they need you. Yes, Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yes, sir. If you ever need anything, you just give us a call, all right? All right, thank you so much. Blah, blah, blah. All right, before I, what was your name? <laughs> Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Wonderful, Jeremiah. It was nice to meet you. Now, listen. Pay close attention because this is the most important thing about the whole thing. You ready? I ask them this question exactly like this every time. Jeremiah, let me ask you a question before I leave you that we like to ask everybody. If you were to die tonight, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? Don't you dare ask them if they're saved. Right. We're in the South. Everybody's mm. saved. Yeah. Yes, yeah. And a Catholic thinks he's saved if he goes and takes a little piece of cracker and a little bit of wine on Sunday morning. Yeah. And the Church of Christ thinks he's saved if he's been dumped under the water in Jesus' name. And the Methodist thinks he's saved as long as he's living by the golden rule. Don't you ask them if they're saved. You ask them if they're 100% sure if they'd have died tonight, they'd go to heaven. Because everybody's saved, but not everybody's sure they're going to heaven. Amen. That's how I ask it every time. Are you 100% sure you're going to heaven when you die? Say no, you're lost. Remember. I'm all new to this lost thing. I'm yeah, you're all new to this. I've never been lost a day in my life. Yeah. <laughs> I was born saved. <laughs> Catholic. Yeah. yeah. No, sir, no. I've no, just asked you a few times to sure you guys know what happened. Ever had one. The worst actor ever. My suck. goodness. I emailed you the script before. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> You're videoing this, and my hair is all over my head. All right, now watch this. You ready? No, sir, I, 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 th I think I would go to heaven, but I'm not sure. I'm 75% sure. I'm 99% sure. I hope so. Well, okay, you're 99% sure, but not 100% sure. If you were to die right I always follow up with this. Well, if you were to die right now, and God were to ask you, why should I let you into heaven, what would you say? Or you can say this. Okay, well, why do you think you'd go to heaven? Mm -hmm. Ask them why they think they'd go to heaven. 99% of the time, they're going to say, I'm a good person, or I've, I've never killed anybody. Well. I've, I've never done anything that bad. Mm -hmm. This is where you need to know the Ten Commandments, all right? You need to make them realize, that's why I always tell people, I'll say, well, okay, how about this? I say, and I always use the the, uh, the the individual. I'll say, well, let's pretend that I'm I, I murdered somebody, I killed somebody, and you're the judge. And I say, Judge Jeremiah, I know I killed this dude, but I've been really good since then, and I promise I'll never kill anybody ever again. I think you should just let me go. Good judge or bad judge, if you just let me go. Bad judge. And I'll say, why? And they'll say, well, you killed somebody. you got to go to jail. That's exactly right. And, it's the same, and I'll tell them, it's the same way with God and our sin. You may have done a lot of good things in your life, mm. but it does not mean that that takes away the bad that you've done. Yes, and that's when you read in Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 3.10, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And a lot of times we miss this one little beautiful verse right in Romans chapter 3 on the Romans road. I don't hear anybody ever use it. You need to use Romans 3.28. Therefore, you read, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.10. For all of sin that comes short of the glory of God. And then I'll show them Romans 3.28. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified. That means right with God, because they don't know what justified means. That means right with God by faith without the deeds of the law. Romans 3.28 says, you don't go to heaven by the deeds. You can't get right with God by doing the deeds of the law. Do you see that? Just like the killer can't get, take away his murder by obeying the law, you can't take away your sin by doing good. 
wheels start turning. I'll say that's why Jesus Christ had to die. And I'll take him to Romans 5, 8. But God commended. That word means showed. They don't know what commended means. But God commended. That means he showed his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jeremiah, let me ask you a question. If you could be good enough to go to heaven, if you could be baptized and go to church and do all these good things to take away the bad you've done, then why did Jesus have to die on the cross? I've never had anybody answer that question. Everyone, yeah, I guess you, I see what you're saying. I guess you're right. All right, and I'll show them that. And I'll say, now here, you say, now, uh, Jeremiah, I just showed you that you can't be good enough to go to heaven and that Jesus Christ died for you. Since let me show you what you can do to know for sure you're going to heaven. And then I'll take them to Romans 10, 9, and 10. And if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thy heart, God praise him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. And with the heart, man believeth unrighteous. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I said, now, Jeremiah, here it is. You can go to church, you can be baptized, you can do all these good things, but none of them are going to take away your sin. Those are all great things, but none of them are going to get you to heaven. You're a sinner, and the only way that your sins get taken away is by the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did for you on the cross. And the Bible says here that you've got to believe that and confess it and receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. That's the only thing you can do to go to heaven. Amen. Amen. And I'll say, does all that make sense? And here's what you do, guys. It's as easy, it's as easy <coughs> as one, two, three. You just simply ask them at that point, would you like to do that? You need to ask them if they want to do it right then. Yeah. Because they may die and go to hell that night. Yes, it is, sir. But preacher, how do I know if they're really getting saved? I don't know. How do I know you're really saved? Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What if they lied to me? That ain't my fault. That ain't your fault. That's between them and the Lord. I did what I was supposed to do. If you, What am I supposed to do? You look me deep in the eyes. Well, don't you lie to me. I mean, is that what we're supposed to do at the door? Look me deep in the eyes and tell me you really believe. And then, what? okay, let's be hypothetical for it. Let's find out. He is lying to me. He didn't really get saved. He just prayed that prayer to get me off his door. What are you supposed to do at that point? Boy, don't you ever lie to me again. I mean, <laughs> you don't know who's really getting saved or who's really not getting How do you know the people that walk down the aisle here on Sunday morning are yeah. really getting saved? Yeah. Yeah. We yes, don't. We just believe it when they say it. Amen. Yes, sir. Would you like to do that right now? Sure. Yes? Here's what I'm going to do now. This is how I do it personally. If y'all want to do it that way, that's fine. I'm saying, yeah, I do it. I always say, now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pray, and I want you to repeat after me. I always say this, though. But understand, the words that are coming out of your mouth does nothing for you. It's the faith in your heart in what you're saying. Does that make sense? No, sir. The sinner's prayer is not a magical charm that you can just say, ah, the Lord's looking down from heaven. Oh, he just said the magic words. I've got to let him into heaven now. Right. No, no, it's not, it's not about it. The, the sinner's prayer isn't some kind of magical formula. It's not an enchantment. We're not, we're, we don't believe in Harry Potter, okay? Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. <laughs> we, don't, we don't say a little spell and all of a sudden get salvation. No, it's the belief. So what I'll say is I'll say, through this prayer, put your faith and trust in what we just talked about. And then what I do is I have them bow their head, and I'll just, I'll just go through the gospel again. I'll just say, all right, now repeat after me. Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I know I've done wrong. Lord, I know I've done wrong. But I believe you died for me. And I believe you rose again from the dead. And I pray that you'd save me and forgive me my sins and take me to heaven when I die. I put all my faith and trust in you and in you alone, not anything I've done. Change my life for your power. I give it all to you. In Jesus' name, amen. It's that simple. And you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed at the amount of people that are willing to do that. I don't think there's any gospel. Curtis Hudson used to say, I don't think there are any gospel hardened places. I think there are only gospel ignorant places. Mm -hmm. You know that most of the people around Villarica here, it's not the fact that they've rejected the gospel. 
they probably never heard a clear presentation of the gospel. Mm -hmm. That's it. Here's the thing, folks. Are you a worldly witness? I mean, if you if you got lost family and you were to go to them, if you were to call them on the phone tonight and you were to say, I'm concerned about you, I don't want you to die and go to hell, I wish you'd get saved. Did you live good enough in front of them the last time you was around them to where they would listen to what you had to say? Y'all still in school down here? Yes, sir. Yeah, everybody, everybody maybe go to public school, Christian school. Y'all got a Christian school here? No? Okay. Not anymore. Not anymore? Okay. So if you go to public school or Christian school, home, whatever, whatever you are, did you live good enough in front of your friends today where you would go to them tomorrow and say, I'm concerned about your soul, I want you to get saved? Your co-workers? Serious thing, isn't it? Very serious thing. Watch this now. You ready? 